friends, welcome to the next video of our BMGP lecture series that is on the maintenance and overruling of the suspension system. Right, this is the third part of our chapter number 4 that is maintenance and overruling of the various systems of the vehicle components. Right, for that first we will see the maintenance of the suspension system. Now, whenever we learn about the suspension system maintenance, then we should keep in mind that steering system is also interconnected to the suspension system. Any change in the suspension system will also change our steering system as well. So, let's start. Just for see the types of suspension, first is a dependent suspension in which one effect on the one tire will also cause the effect on the second one and in case of the independent the effect on the one tire will not be transferred to the second tire that you can see on this screen. The types of the independent first one is the McPherson type in which only one strut is mounted to the wheels. The second type is the dependent type that is leaf spring. The leaf spring is connected to our tires and it goes up and down by giving the smoothness. And the third one is the double wishbone suspension system which is most widely used in which two arms is provided and in between that the coil spring and the suspension system or the absorber will be attached. You can see the function of the wishbone system wherever vehicle is driven. So the performance of the wishbone system is the best compared to all the components of the system. Whenever we see the maintenance of the systems of suspension, then we will always see about the Wishbone or Macpherson type. Though Wishbone is better, still the Macpherson is used in the vehicle because it is simpler and it, is, it gives you an extra space for keeping the components of the vehicle. First, the components which you are seeing on your screen that is Macpherson suspension system. Generally, it is used in the front side of the vehicle because the engine and different components are given in the front side. So, to provide the space to them, the Macpherson will be attached. The Macpherson has one lower arm on which the strut has been arranged, and on that strut, the absorber and spring assembly has arranged, and on that, upper mounting has been arranged that is connected with our frame of the vehicle. Also, you can see the other components which is the parts of the steering system that is rack and pinion system, tie road and right, these are the parts of our steering system. Now the second you are seeing is the wishbone type suspension system. So in the case of the wishbone suspension system there are two arms, lower arm and upper arm. Both the arms are given in the shape of a wishbone or A type shape has been given to those arms. In between those arms, the absorber and the coil coil spring assembly will be arranged and that will give you a better absorb shock absorbing capacity compared to the McPherson type suspension system. Right, so generally in the vehicle, front side McPherson is given and on the rear side, wishbone suspension is given. Next thing that is required to be done in the suspension system is to duplicate the suspension system components. What components needs to be duplicated? So in that case, all the end, uh, ends of the different rows, which are the types of uh, components of the suspension as well as steering. These are tie rows, relay rows, steering arm, ball joints, upper and lower control arms, etc. etc. All the joints which are given in the suspension as well as steering system will be duplicated wherever required. Next thing is the front and rear wheel bearings will be duplicated. Like right, wheel bearings which are connected with the suspension system and the wheel is connected on that wheel bearing will be duplicated. And the last thing is the spring duplication. Generally, the spring duplication will be required in case of the coil springs or any independent suspension system. Next thing is that the common suspension system problems. Which type of system problems can be arised in the suspension system is that first the ball joints can be worn or broken. That ball joints, if they are worn, then the ball joints needs to be removed or replaced. 
abnormal tire wear, right? The tire can be wearing at abnormally if the proper steering or the suspension is not given to the vehicle. Then tire can wear from any one side or from bottom part or from the middle part. That wear will be uneven or abnormal. That will reduce the life of our tire. So for that the suspension will be adjusted. The bare control arm pushing, the control arm which is connected with our steering system, that can happen because of bad pushings. The sagging or broken springs, if the springs is sagging, if no proper stiffness is not there in the springs, or if the springs are broken, then they have to be replaced as well. Loose or missing sway bar means, sway bar means the bar which is used to avoid the swaying of the vehicle. And the last one is the loose and bad rack mounting bushings, right? So bushings of the rack mounting, if they are bad, then they have to be replaced. Also, if the bad upper strut mounts of bearing is being there, then they have to be replaced. If the bone or broken shocks or strut on which the shocks absorber is mounted, then they can be replaced with a simple procedure. Now, how to maintain the suspension system? Here on the figure, you can see a strut mounted absorber or a strut mounted shock absorber with its components types. Now, let's see the tire wear patterns. Now, tire wear patterns and the common problems for the tire wear pattern will depend on the quality of tire and also depend on the suspension and steering patterns. We will check the wear patterns with the different method or just the visual inspection. Also, by checking the tire pattern, we can discover other problems uh, by using that. The tire cupping or the tire wear in the cupping method can be happening because of the poor quality of the tire or because of the suspension system problems. Right, so for that we need to maintain the suspension. If the PLP is in the center area, then from the center side only the tire is being weird. That can happen because of the poor inflation of the tire and that can risk the damage. So for that we will just deflate the tires. If the PLP is in the shoulder area, which means on the side, part of the tire. That can happen because of the under inflation of the tires. Also that can cause the damage and also it can create the, the reduction in the fuel economy. Right. So all these things can be adjusted by the simple procedure of the tire or by the simple procedure of adjusting the suspension systems. Right. Here in the figure you can see the different types of gear that will show us the problem with the suspension system, first one is the toe gear, second one is the camber gear, third one is the center gear. Toe gear can happen because of the incorrect toe in the vehicle, that will be seen in the next lecture, also the camber, that will also a part of the steering system, the center gear we saw because of the over inflation, the edge gear because of the under inflation, the patch gear happens in the patchy because of the road condition, and the fourth one is the cup gear, or we can say the scallop tire gear. Right, so this is the wear that we saw in the first of the previous slide is that the cup wear can be happening because of the bone of suspension components. Right, so last type of wear will show us the problem in the suspension system. The next thing is the checking of the shocks and the struts. Checking of shock absorber and the strut on which the shock absorber is mounted. For that, the bounce space of the vehicle will be done. The suspension will be bounced for 10 to 12 times, and we will see in how much time the shock is being absorbed. Next thing is we will check for the oil leakage, and the last thing is we will check if there is any excessive body sway or deep or any wander. Right, so if there are any problems in the system, then the shocks or the strut on which the shocks absorber is mounted will be adjusted. Let's see one video on how to replace the Mac person strut shock absorbers. Right, so in this video you can see the shock absorber is being removed from the vehicle and this shock absorber needs to be removed from this newer shock absorber which is seen on the screen right now that this new absorber had to be replaced with the older one. Now these are the spring compressors. Right, whenever we remove the absorber from the system, the spring needs to be kept in that compressed position. 
Otherwise, the spring will lose its stiffness and it will not give you the stiffness which is required after the assembly of the absorber. So before removing the stud or the shock absorber from the system, the first thing we need to do is to keep the spring in the compressed position which will be done by the help of the spring compressors. After using the spring compressor systems, what we will do is that we will remove the bolt from the upward side. Right, first the spring will be compressed that you can see on your screen that the spring will be kept in the compressed position with the help of the special spring compressors. After keeping in the place those spring compressors, the next thing that is required to be done is to remove the bolt from the top side or from the head of the absorber. From that head of the absorber, the shock will be removed. The shock absorber which is connected in the place will be removed. Right, so this is how the spring has been detached from there and this absorber is being removed on it. Now that thing is better will be kept on the new absorber and these springs will be again attached to this replaced shock absorber or the new shock absorber. After keeping in place, you can see the bearing that is on top of the absorber. After keeping the place, the bolt will again will be fixed after pressing the bolt or attaching the bolt. Next thing that requires to be done is to remove those spring compressor that was attached to keep the spring in the compressing position which is required for the proper performance after completion of the replacing method of the shock absorbers. Right, so right, you can see now that nut has been completely done so that the proper fitting can be obtained after replacing the shock absorber. So this is how you can replace the shock absorber in case of the Mac person scrub shock absorber. Right, so in this video we saw about the procedure for maintenance and overloading of the suspension system. Now next thing in the next video we will learn about the maintenance and overloading of the steering system which is interconnected to our suspension system. Right, changing the suspension will also change the camber angle, the caster angle, to in, to out. Right, so whenever we change the suspension system, then there will be a change in the steering system. So whenever we maintain suspension, the need will arise to maintain the steering system. Right, so in the next we will see about the steering maintenance, about the wheel alignment and about the maintenance of the steering linkages. Until then, thank you so much.